Hey crafting besties. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you, sharing with y'all, three Kirkland stoops using Dollar Shoe Supplies, but also I'm going to be showing you my techniques and my um, hacks, I guess if you will, for stenciling and the way I use my Cricut to create decals and things like that. And I hope you find it interesting and I hope you find it fun because we're gonna start right now. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I'm using this Easter sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna be taping down that little hanging string thing, the hanger string thing, because I don't want it to get in my way. But I also wanted to mention, these are what I consider dupes of the Kirkland's signs, but they're not exact dupes because, you know, the, the length, the, the width, the, all that kind of stuff, the <laughs> materials I'm using are not an exact dupe, but you're gonna get a very, very similar look. So I've taken a rag that I've really gotten wet, um, really wet, and I'm just pressing it down. I let it stay for a few minutes. And then when I go to try to remove the paper, the paper comes off a heck of a lot easier than if I hadn't done that. And I just find that this works best for me. And then I just can use my little scraper tool that I got from Dollar Tree and I'll scrape off the rest of the stuff that you see there. But also I'll kind of go in and score just lightly around the paper around the, the pink part of the paper there, that gingham paper, because that way the water can get in to underneath it and help loosen it up more. And when I do this, I do let it dry overnight or, you know, for several hours because I don't, you know, you don't really want the, or I don't want the sign to be wet. <laughs> so I let it dry for a, a, a while before I actually start my DIY. I am just using Rustoleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color Charcoal. This is, I do like this color, but I wish it was just a little darker, like a little more black, but it's charcoal, not black. So <laughs> there you go. And I'm taping off the signs all the way around. What I didn't show was one end, one of the short ends of the sign actually came off. And so I just reattached it with some wood glue and we're good to go. And I taped off the outside because I wanted to retain that, the look of it. And I'm just painting the inside with the chalk paint. And there's not really, I'm, you know, I'm not the best painter maybe, <laughs> but i um, just giving it a good coat till, till it's all covered. I used my Cricut to cut out this snowflake decal that I just searched for on Cricut Space Design. Cricut Design Space, <laughs> however you say it. And I'm using my paper transfer tape. Now I reuse my paper transfer tape until like there's like no stickiness whatsoever inside. And to place it on top of this sign, I just measured with my heart and I laid it down. Now the sign does have that little inner little sign and I'm just gonna press down around the corners uh, on the edges of the thing. Look at me trying to save that paper. So you see me here, I'm just kind of pushing it down a little bit so that it's not, I don't know how to explain what I just did there. I'm just pushing it so it's against the sign. So that way like the sticker decal's not like in hanging in the air or something. <laughs> I, don't I don't really know how to explain that. So that really wasn't a good explanation, now was it? But that's how it's turning out. Now here is the Kirkland sign, just to kind of give you a point of reference. And here's my sign. And like I said, I like how it turned out. It's simple, it's basic. Maybe I could have played up on that inner rectangle shape that was in there, but I like how it turned out. And I think it looks a lot like the inspo piece. And it cost me far less. The sign cost me $1.25. And you know, of course I have my vinyl on hand. I have my paint on hand and a little bit of my time, and there you go. I wanted to let y'all know that today's video is part of the First Friday playlist. I host it every single month with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. I'm gonna link her channel in the description box below. I sure hope you check it out. She's got some amazing things. She does really great gingerbread stuff. I mean, but in addition to gingerbread stuff, she does other videos as well. I know you're gonna love her. Check her out. Her link's gonna be below. And coming in 2024, we're gonna be making some changes to the playlist. So I hope you stay tuned to my channel to see what those are. And now back to the DIYs. <laughs> you may hear my printer in the background <laughs> because I'm printing some stuff, but 
I always remove the stickers. I just do that. Even if you're never going to see the back, I always just do that. And I got this sign from Dollar Tree, believe it or not. Kind of looks like a Hobby Lobby one, but it's not. And I'm taping up the inner portion there, as you see me doing there. I'm just using regular painter's tape. And I tend to reuse my painter's tape too. I'm surprised I didn't reuse it on this one. But anyways, so I'm just kind of taping that off blocking that off. I think there's another term for it. But anyway, I'm doing that because I don't want to get paint on the frame. And I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And I'm going to be painting. The only thing about chalk paint, or at least Waverly's, and maybe mine's been sitting a while, and that's why it is the way it is, it gets kind of gloopy and thick. And sometimes it's just kind of like, I don't know, kind of gloopy and thick. Anyways, all I'm doing is painting the inside of this sign with the crimson color. This is very simple and easy to do, and it's nothing <laughs> earth shattering or anything like that. I am using a sponge brush this time just to see that I got from Dollar Tree, just to see if it makes it look better, makes it look smoother, has less brush strokes. I don't know. I mean, I like how it turned out. So I cut out another decal using my Cricut, but instead of weeding it regularly, like pulling all the way the excess vinyl, I'm reverse weeding and I'm pulling out the design. So I'm pulling up all the letters. Now these letters, the, uh, what do you call it? The font that I used is a little thin kind of font. So when I'm pulling it, it is kind of, you know, I'm being careful so that it doesn't attach to something else. It is permanent vinyl. Sometimes the permanent vinyl is a little on the sticky side and I don't want it sticking to any of the other vinyl and messing up anything that I'm trying to do. And one of the things that you have to be careful about is like the little, like the little sticker part, the vinyl part in the letter G or the letter B, you have to make sure that those stay stuck down Otherwise, I won't stencil correctly. And then, of course, I'm using my favorite paper transfer tape. Um, I get mine from Expressions Vinyl, but I know there's some on Amazon. And, um, yeah. And so I'm pulling everything back. And, I'm again, I'm just making sure that all the pieces, like in the letter B and the letter G and the letter E, they're all staying down because, you know, sometimes those can pull up and you don't even notice it. In fact, I think in the next one... I show you where it happened to me. <laughs> so I'm pulling back carefully and gently because I want to make sure everything stays stuck down as it should. And then I'm kind of pressing it down a little bit. And then I'm using a sponge dauber brush that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just pouncing it up and down in just a up and down motion and going lightly over it. There are two things that you can do here to make sure that you have crisp lines. You can go over your design, your stencil, with the same color as the base color. So in this case, I would have used the red and gone over this first, then used my white. Or some people use Mod Podge. I don't like Mod Podge just because I feel like it makes the vinyl stick even more when I'm trying to remove it after I'm done stenciling. So I just usually um, don't use Mod Podge. <laughs> and then... Like I said, I just went for it and I, I did it without doing a base coat first and it mine turned out good. But I've been stenciling for a little bit and, you know, I, I feel like I kind of understand the process a little bit. But now I'm just going back in and weeding out all the little parts that need to be weeded out so that you can read what the sign says. And I wanted to show you how the Kirkland sign turned out. Oh, they've got little dots and I didn't put dots on mine. I need to go back and put dots on mine. But I do love how mine turned out and I just think it adds a nice pop of color. It's not too like imposing. It's not a huge sign or anything like that. And my lines are pretty crisp. That's what, I, what I'm trying to show you right there. And if you don't have a Cricut, you could use, or Silhouette or whatever, you could use like the carbon paper or the um, graphite paper and trace it on. Or you could just take a pencil and print out the, the, the image that you want, take a pencil, rub it on the back and trace it out that way. It'd work either way. I have a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. And I would love it if you join. But if you join, I really, really want you to at least comment on somebody else's creations or things that they've shared, or maybe you share something so we can all see what you're working on. The link is going to be in the description box below.
Now back to the DIYs. All right, here's our last project, and I'm going to show you a little bit better how I actually do the stenciling part. Again, I'm just taping off the all the way around because I want the frame to stay the color that the frame is. And I just use blue painter's tape. I know some other people use like the frog and frogger tape or something like that. But this works well for me, and it doesn't pull up anything when I remove it, so I like it. And I do it in little sections so it's easier to pull up. And for this one, I'm using... Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Antique Green. I really like this color. I think it's a real pretty Christmassy color. And again, I'm using that sponge brush to give it a little bit smoother finish and hopefully less brush strokes are visible. Because I'm not using a brush, I'm using a sponge. <laughs> then, um, reverse weeding again. Oh, you see I have help on that top corner there. But I'm reverse weeding again. And you have to be careful because some parts will come up and see that little K has like a little tiny piece and I have to make sure that stays down because that's part of the stencil <laughs> and it won't make the K look quite, I mean, it, the K looks fine, but I'm just saying you have to be careful with that kind of stuff. So I pulled up everything and I'm just pulling up all the different letters and then I go to transfer it. Okay. I always reuse my paper transfer tape, like I said a minute ago, until it has like no stick left. I pull everything off, and y'all, I don't notice this until I start to add it on the paper, but I just looked at it. I'm missing the little, little um, vinyl in where the S goes, okay? And yeah, so I got to go back. See right there? That little piece didn't get transferred over. I just need to take it off and then position it where it needs to go. And again, putting my stuff back. Now I'm pouncing up and down and I want to show you. And so I kind of made this in like slow motion, but you want your, your brush or dauber thing to be perpendicular. Is that the right word to the, um, the surface that you're, you know, stenciling on and see, I'm just going up and down easy light motions. I'm not pushing too hard because I don't want to push the paint underneath the stencil. I just want it to go where, you know, my stenciling is. And again, if it was me and I was just starting out, I would do that base coat of the green color, then do the white just to make sure that everything is crisp like you like it. And then I pulled back the decal and of course you got to take out all the little spots like that to make the sign. Here's the Kirkland's version of the sign. And yes, it's a bigger sign, but mine is just as cute and it says deck the halls. And then I, I love how this one turned out. I just really love green, the, you know, the green fam, color family and uh, the green family as well. The guy I bought my car from, his last name was green. Anyways, so I, I love, I just love this color and I love how this one turned out. And this just goes to show that you can create high end looking decor on a budget. Each of these signs was only $1.25 and if you think about it, I mean, I had the paint on hand. Yes, I have a Cricut. Yes, I have vinyl on hand. So some of the items that something would be something that you would have to purchase. But look, y'all, these are so beautiful. And they're just going to go great in my home for the holiday season. And I can't wait to switch out my decor. Now, I don't switch out my decor until Thanksgiving. So here's a quick question. When do you decorate for Christmas? Before Thanksgiving or after? There's no right or wrong answers. No fighting in the comments but I do want to know, when do you decorate for Christmas? I typically don't decorate until the day after Thanksgiving. And we typically have travel plans around Thanksgiving. So as soon as I get home, I start changing everything out for the next season. Now, as a DIYer, of course, I have to do some stuff ahead of time. But yeah, um, that's what I did. And I appreciate y'all coming to my channel. I do love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. Like I say in my intro, I just love it because I think you can make and create a beautiful and happy home with simple, you know, items and not breaking the bank. Thank you so much for joining me today as I crafted and created and as I shared some of the tips that I use when I'm stenciling. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something helpful and informative. And if you're working on something, tag me on Instagram, tag me on Facebook or something. I'd love to see what you're working on. And um, if you want to follow me, 
like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or over on TikTok. My handle is Our Grey House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye!